Thì ta không có nhiều thì do tất cả những gì mà mình uh, mình mình uh, che chắc là uh, dạng hình mà mình xem thấy trên mạng đó okay. thì nó có tất cả những gì mà, 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 mà mình nói về uh, trong hai ngày vừa qua okay. thì nó okay. It's, it got established in obviously the year 2000 that's why we have the name uh, it's not popular now because mainly implement in implementation cost okay uh, all the browser people the, the the people who design internet explorer mozilla um, uh, opera and so on and so forth they they don't want to spend their time implementing the uh, decoder for you have to because it takes energy away okay so but but it's based on the way they transform which is the second topic of this summer seminar right uh, from angelo so you obviously should recognize the structure before. This is an entire image, okay? Passing through, in this case, three level where they transform. And the, uh, uh, unlike the VCT-based JPEG, okay, JPEG 2000 doesn't do compression locally. It actually does compression globally for an image, or at least a big part of an image, they call it a tie. Okay, so for example, if you have a huge image, they might break it into tiles, 256 square, so basically large block, okay? And then for each of the block, it does the web bit transform and it does coding. Okay, the way that we do web bit coding is um, quite different from the way we do um, the regular JPEG VCT based coding, okay? And, and one of the main techniques is based on the concept calling zero tree. Okay, zero tree means um, there is a strong correlation between Cartesians at this level, at this level, and this level. So this guy, this Cartesian is called, um, so these are the, um, the parent, okay? And this is, these are the children, these are the grandchildren. You can think of it that way, right? So one parent has four children, these four children has uh, have children of their, their own, okay, so they got together this brand to give you 16 grandchildren, okay, and typically the observation is this, if a parent is insignificant, meaning small, or below a certain threshold, okay, then it's very likely that all the children is so, uh, and, and, and the grandchildren as well, will be below the threshold, okay. Now, what, what, why is that so significant? For example, if, there, if, if, if you declare that something insignificant, you say right here that this is insignificant, then the rest will just be thrown away, and you really terminate the entire branch. You kill off the entire tree. Okay? So if you say that this guy, in, in the encoding process, if you decide that this guy is insignificant, the rest will be thrown away okay, because of this properties. So basically, that's how, um, uh, instead of having those zigzag scan and then end of block, we will do this uh, type of, uh, of coding. And as you can see, it's, it's very, um, it's somewhat related to the embedded quantizer that we studied yesterday, right? We send information one bit plane at a time. So the bit plane is, give you the threshold right here. The threshold T give you where, where you are on the bit plane, okay? And, and if, if the parent is under the bit plane, then most likely all the, uh, all, the, all the children and the grandchildren will be under the threshold as well. So then you can just eliminate the entire branch, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go uh, much too deep into that, although I have the remaining, let's see how many slides. Fortunately, the mathematical part is basically over. Because in motion estimation, motion compensation, unless you do optical flow, which is very fine at a very fine scale, um, there's just not much mathematics, okay? Um, we cannot afford to do motion estimation at the pixel level. Why? Because it will cost us as much. Okay, if you want to describe the motion of every single pixel, 
it will cost us as much as sending that pixel over, right? Why do we need to do motion estimations, right? So um, we do motion estimation because we would like to group an, a region, okay? And describe the motion of that region together, or that block, or that object, or that whatever, together, okay? Using one single motion vector. That's the entire key, right? Uh, otherwise, it's, it's not as effective anymore. So uh, we're going to spend the first half of the lectures on video coding approach and algorithms. So mainly, uh, we talk about the um, simple video codecs and the block motion estimations and motion compensations. Okay. Um, after we get the basic down, we will start taking a look at video coding international standard. Okay, um, which is uh, you should recognize some of these names before. Okay, these are actually the type of um, uh, um, standard codec that we use every day, you know, every day is life. For example, the, the, all the DVD movies that we watch and, and digital tele, uh, television broadcasts that we see every day is in the MPEG-2 format right here. Your VCD, the karaoke CD that we, uh, we come to love comes from MPEG-1. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Now, um, and if we have some time, maybe we talk about the latest development. Okay, and the goal is tomorrow we start uh, talking about the communications part, which is the the really active area that that um, research is still being done every day. Okay, so first let's try to understand video. Okay, and and so we have MATLAB assignments. I ask you to uh, uh, take out frames look at the frame, so on and so forth. So you get an idea of, of what it is. You, it's, it's a concatenation of many different images, right? It's <coughs> one after the other. And a lot of times, they uh, uh, adjacent frames, frames that right next to each other, the neighboring frames, right? Have a lot of things uh, in, in, uh, to do with each other. Have a lot of things in common, right? They probably share the same background, right? Whatever in the... Uh, in, in, in the back and maybe the foreground is moving a little bit. Okay, um, so you, we can think of a, a natural video signal as a sequence of still images or frames. Okay, so that's number one. Second, let's investigate the type of correlation that you would see in a standard video sequence. Okay, what type of correlation? So the type of correlation sharing the background is called temporal correlation. Okay, the, the, the correlation in time. Okay, so that's, called, that's why it's called temporal correlation. So similar background with a few moving objects in the foreground. Okay, that's the, that's the heaviest type of correlation in video. And then spatial correlation, what does that mean? Similar pixels seem to be grouped together, just like spatial correlation in images. So this is what we have been dealing with so far. Okay, that's why we do transform, okay, so that we can take away this type of correlation. When you do DCT transform, you take away this type of correlation. Okay, so that's, that's another part of it. Uh, since video is just consists of all the frames, if you don't take time into account, this is what you will see. Okay, and then there is usually much, much more temporal correlation than spatial. That's why in video coding, transform is not a critical part. Okay, taking the DC, the KLT, the DCT helps, but it doesn't really buy you a lot of compressions. What buys you the most is how to take away this temporal volume, take away the background, and only encode the foreground. Okay, that's that's the key. So motion model in video sequence. Let's let's think about the type of motion that you would observe in a natural video 